What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Lord Zhang Fei bringing you another Uber set challenge today, episode 23, The Cow King's Leathers. Many players of the original Diablo will remember the mysterious rumor that there was a secret cow level. The rumor was that by clicking on a specific cow in Tristram, a number of times, I'm no milkmaid, you could access a wondrous place known as the secret cow level. There was of course no cow level in Diablo 1, but the legend was born. And this was even teased in the Diablo 1 expansion Hellfire with the complete nut quest. When Starcraft was released, it featured a cheat code that was activated by typing, there is no cow level. This was Blizzard's way of officially confirming that there was, in fact, no secret cow level in Diablo 1. During the production of Diablo 2, gamers often asked if there would be any cows to battle in the long-awaited sequel. On April 1st, 1999, a screenshot of the week featured an image of an Amazon fighting cows that wielded pole arms, and people wondered if the screenshot was an April Fool's joke, or if there really was a secret cow level planned for Diablo 2. When Diablo 2 was released in June of 2000, it wasn't long before players were experimenting with the Herodric cube combinations, hoping to find the keys to unlock new and powerful secrets. Eventually, a recipe was discovered that revealed the most anticipated secret of them all, the secret cow level. The cow level in Diablo 2 is the only place the Cow King set drops. It's actually the only items in the game that can only drop in a specific area and do not follow the treasure class drop rates all the other items fall under. The boss of the area is the Cow King, and once the Cow King is killed, the player that killed him and the party that he's with will never be able to open the portal to the secret cow level ever again. The cow level has appeared in numerous Blizzard games as a reference, or even as its own level as seen in World of Warcraft. The cow level would also return to the Diablo series in Diablo 3 during the third anniversary of the game under the guise, not the cow level. Originally, this was supposed to be available during a limited time, but eventually was included in a cube recipe that could be accessed at any time. The cow level will always be a staple in Diablo franchise, and I look forward to its return in Diablo 4. Let's check this set out. All right, first item gonna be the Cow King's Horn War Hat. Not much going on with this. 35% damage goes to mana, I guess is a good stat, but not really. Uh, 18 to resistance on the armor, plus 30 to life. And it is studded armor with a whopping 57 defense. Not good. And then we have the Cow King's Boots. 20 to dexterity, 30 faster run walk. Definitely the best item of the set. There is only three items in this set. Uh, basically this is a normal set not that great but the complete set bonuses do offer a really interesting stat 25% chance to cast level 5 static field when struck that is actually really awesome and then 25 poison res 20 to strength 30% increased attack speed 100% chance to find a magic item and a 100% gold find. So the set bonuses are pretty worthy. I decided to torture myself for this run. And I don't know if you see my whopping 667 base vitality on there. And that is with max AR lifer charms. I decided to go a build that used zero vitality why did I do this well I wanted this run to be a little more challenging I could have easily thrown all of this stuff on a smiter and done it with the quickness but trying not to use smite as much and give the druid a little love so yeah we're gonna go ahead and do a fury wolf druid instead of taking the easy way out and at first you look at it and you're thinking three sets pieces that can't be that bad 
but the helm and the boots are probably next to the weapon the best items for a PVM melee and we basically lost 60% crushing blow so that left us using some interesting items I'll go over those in just a few minutes after we go ahead and take Mephisto out over here if you'll notice we are not doing too bad that is because we do have 80% crushing blow or excuse me 90% so we can definitely get him low and then uh, it's just gonna take a while to finish him off I will say though for not having any hit points I mean we do have 2300 life and that seems like a lot uh, but as you all probably know a shapeshifter can get upwards to five or six thousand life so we are definitely on the low end of that go ahead and get him down take him out unfortunately that static field that we're casting is not doing anything to him as he is totally immune to lightning attacks we lost our mercenary, we lost our bear, but we are still going strong here. And if you will notice, there's also no life tap involved with this build. Like I said, I was trying to torture myself and wanted to make this one challenging, you know? I tried on a lot of the builds that you do see where I ended up using a smiter or a summoner. I certainly did try some of the other classes. Unfortunately, some of the items in this set challenge are so bad that uh, you're not really going to be pulling that off without the smiter or summoner. So. so I swear he's going to die eventually. There he goes. The absorb on this guy is just absolutely amazing. If you'll notice, my health was not going down much at all. So the other items that we did use, we did use the Griswold Redemption. And we did go ahead and put four burr runes in there to get that up to 80% crushing blow. Like I said, with the hat and the boots being taken up and the armor, uh, that is pretty much the only source of crushing blow outside of the gloves that you can get in the whole game. So after some healthy consideration, I bet you this probably would have been significantly faster had I used my Tomb Reaver. But we decided to throw on the Grizz Caddy and take it out that way now like i said we are also are using rising sun amulet a phoenix monarch steel rins two raven frost and a blood belt for the open wounds and our mercenary is using the phoenix cryptic axe with a steel shade and a fortitude now we are gonna get faded again there is quite a lot of pre-buff in this fight uh going zero vitality points was uh you know something i had to really prepare for but we'll get there i swear so to sum up this character he does do 3.78 attacks per second not so bad i decided to definitely do this as a wolf because the wolf does gain the increased attack speed from the werewolf skill opposed to the bear a bear, you really have to find the right weapon. We do have 24,000 attack rating. And once we switched up those charms from the resistance charms that we needed to stack to combat Mephisto's conviction, we are at 2,600 life now. So that's a little bit healthier. And if you'll notice, we did just cast Amplify Damage using one of my favorite rune words in the game a brand demon crossbow that does have a 35 percent chance to cast amplified damage when struck 
So you can actually cast the spell while you are in shapeshift form. If you've never tried using a brand demon crossbow as a shapeshifter, I highly recommend it. If you'll notice, the amplified damage is working exceptionally well. And Bale died faster than Mephisto, so... Yeah, it doesn't happen often. I think a big issue with the Mephisto fight was my faster hit recovery is only at 20%. So with all of those mages throwing all of that stuff at me, it certainly was keeping me in the faster hit recovery animation for way more than I wanted to be. Altogether for our stat points, we do have 352 strength. 291 dexterity and 57 vitality and we do get some vitality from our torch and our annihilus but that is base vitality outside of that we did max werewolf lycanthropy fury spirit wolf and the rest in summon bear of course spirit wolf is a Synergy to summon bear for more life. So that is why we did that. I Always thought the cow king and the cow level was a really cool addition to Diablo I really hope that they do include it in Diablo 4 Definitely getting smacked around here. I had to stop attacking. I wanted to make sure that when I did have the brand Demon crossbow out to cast that amplify damage that I was not attacking. We are using it purely for the casting of amplify damage. That way, I'm not using another weapon for the set challenge. It'd be, in my opinion, that's no different than using a charge on a wand. If you'll notice Diablo's health went right back up. Sometimes that can be a total pain. With only 10% open wounds from our belt. Uh, you gotta make sure that we are getting consistent hits on him. What really helped is my mercenary using that Phoenix Steel Shade combo. Uh, notice he's having no problem surviving all of these Venom Lords and he's really cleaning it up for me. Uh, if you want to bring a mercenary into Uber Tristram, stacking those two items can yield you up to 33 Fire Absorb, which is just really awesome. He did a real good job fighting off uh, Diablo and Bill. Mephisto, sometimes he can certainly kill him. Uh, especially if he gets those big lightning attacks in. So we'll go over the gear. As you'll see, that's where all my life's coming from. Are all these small charms. Pretty much all max damage charms. Get that damage up. Really wanted to do this with the Grizz Caddy. Really like that weapon. That's the stats and the skills. Let's go ahead and ID this torch and get on out of here. Got nine more episodes left of this Uber set challenge and then I can start my next one, which I'm real excited about. Well, keep your fingers crossed. Oh, 10, 16. All right, well, I will see you guys at the next episode and you all have a good night.